list, whereas here in Europe, she's kind of fallen through. She's not something that the teams really put a lot of value on. Things like the Xin Zhao, Lee Sin, Kha'Zix kind of go above her in terms of that jungle priority. So I find that slight shift in what is important to teams quite interesting. An odd two, and we'll see what the priority remains as the jungler's Casio. pool is completely open. Cassio, though, is available. The question for me is, are we going to see this Cassio in the bot lane? It was so popular in the Kespa Cups band so consistently. We've seen it here in Europe in the hands of Nuke Duck, but he took it in the mid lane. I kind of want to see what the bot lane Cassio is all about. Could go top, could go mid, could go bot. I hope it's, it goes into the bot lane. There's a lot of stuff that you can talk about. Uh, very strong scaling, very strong duelist. Works well with a lot of supports. Interestingly here, ooh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is this special, Betty? I okay, know what you've got to say. Tell the people. Tell the people. It might be the Sejuani top. I've been hearing about it in solo oh. queue. I've been looking forward to how it can be brought about. There's a lot of flexibility here. Wait, Sejuani I thought this was Attila busting out the Karthus in the bot lane. I mean, it also could be. Both I, picks I, are very I big. I honestly love picks. this meta. I love this meta. Zach now coming out. Now that one. That's a Xerxes special. That feels like a Xerxes special. I don't think that one's getting flexed. Scion as well might confirm the Cassio into the mid lane or the bot lane. It is definitely going to limit the options available. Scion himself has also seen a little bit of play there in the mid lane. Still so much flexibility as we close out the first pick phase here on both sides. I like that we see engage in the hands of both junglers. That gets me excited. And a lot of power definitely in the Karthus if it's executed correctly. Oh, man. Vitality are pulling the G2 on us right now. They're just like flex, 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 flex. I mean, there's still a decent amount of flexibility on Splice, so it's difficult to assume where things are going right now. But what we can say for sure is that Vitality, with the Jace, it is considered a strong pick into the Casio. They ideally would like to have that matchup. You expect, based on what we've seen from Karthus so far, for it to be in the jungle. I'm kind of hedging towards the Sejuani top, but we don't know just yet. We really don't know. God, and I actually I actually love it, because it's so easy once you've seen one or two Karthus jungle games to just get tunneled on that idea that he has to go into the jungle. But the best part is, is we're going to get something new and something interesting, because either the Sejuani is going to leave the jungle or the Karthus is going to leave the jungle, and one of those things is guaranteed to happen. Yep, it's going to be interesting for sure. Now we actually see a Darius ban in the top lane. Now that's interesting. Now Kabashar did play a bit of Darius last year. He did. He was a big fan of those carry kind of top laners. And if we assume that the Sion is going into the hands of Vizichachi, he doesn't want to have to deal with something obnoxious like the Darius. Well, of course, with the Zac as well, kind of hard to win that 2v2. Not a ton of damage between those two champions. So I can I can see the argument still feels yeah. very focused a little out of the out of the ordinary here. Rakan being banned, though, not a huge surprise. Obviously, very high on the support tier list. Alistair, I guess because you don't catch. know what anything is, you're not entirely sure what you're supposed to ban. Taking away, away weird flex picks. I see <laughs> what they're doing here, because the Swain, another one, can go anywhere. And Splice, you feel like, had a strategy coming to this draft. They see the interesting picks coming out from Vitality, and they go, OK, well, we don't know as much as we thought we did, and so we're going to adjust. It's either Thresh or Tom Kench. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now for Vitality, both very popular picks for Jack Troll, and I think they both... Never mind, I'm going to stop now, because <laughs> clearly I cannot predict this Vitality draft. Morgana, I think we can safely assume is support. I think that's a pretty confident assumption. I'm waiting for the BuzzFeed title, like, this meta <laughs> stumbles expert. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> All caps, every letter. <laughs> Kabi, though, now needs to figure out what he wants to play. Will he try the Cassio? Kabi, I think most often we identify with these late game scaling carries, is going to get the Sivir, so perfectly on brand for Kabi. And now, pretty much committing that Cassio into the mid lane, we will see a support pickup coming out. Short of a very creative flex from Norskarn, but. So, I would now assume that the Jace is mid into the Cassio. The Scion will go top into the Sejuani. Karthus will be played jungle into the Zac. And then you're just rounding things out with a bit of disengage from the side of Splice with the Braum. So Braum Sivir, pretty safe, pretty easy going lane. Team fighting is that much stronger due to the Sivir boomerang changes now, the Q yeah, changes. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to assume that the AD carry is the role that's missing right now for Vitality. And if it is the AD carry, you could go something like a Vayne if you want a strong scaling matchup into the Sivir. You could also potentially do Kaiser. You, oh, All there right. it is. I got Game one. I got in. one. Oh, wait, so that means we're going to see the Sejuani top lane. We're going to see the Sejuani top lane. Oh. oh, so I got two. Wait, no. No, we're not, sir. Sejuani's going in the jungle. We're going to have the Jace top and the Karthus mid. Don't believe it. Okay, 20 seconds, folks. Everyone remember, 
The good news for us is that at least one team is playing by the book right now. It is Splice. That has counted against them in the past, but we'll see what they can do with this composition. The Scion, the Zac, the Cassio. It's a classic Splice Silver Braum. Like, very if classic. A, if that's Niski, like... It, yeah. yeah, if this was Niski... <laughs> If this wasn't new champion select, you'd be like, am I watching a VOD from yeah. summer 2018? Is that what is that what we're looking at now? And of course, you know, that. the Vayne and the Karthus, but... No! Oh, I thought I had it, man! It's okay, dude. There's no one, no one wins, all right? No, no one, one wins, wins the flex pick hey, game. Hey, the fans do, because they get to see Vayne. <laughs> the Vayne changes. There was a Reddit thread that came up about her, how she's, like, dominating solo queue right now. She's really strong. She has a pretty good matchup into Civic, because Civic can't outdo her for anything. Vayne's late game team fighting is also insane now, because the tumbles cooldown gets reduced when you're in your final hour and on top of that her rage blade at two items oh beautiful item really really strong rage blade blade of the rune king so strong Vettius. these guys now going to get ready to head to the rift something i'm so incredibly excited to see is how they're going to approach some of these more unique picks what the karth is going to do in the mid lane up against the casio what is the vein going to opt to go for how is this champion going to build as we get into this game can splice Move up to 2-0. Can they get that solid starting week, or is the 1-1 curse back for them? And can Vitality get a win on the board in week one? Remind us what they're all about, or are they going to fall down to the wayside here in the first two days of the LEC? That is the question on everyone's minds. The Berlin crowd is excited. They're looking forward to this. We want to see the return of the aggressive, the playmaking, the meta-defining Vitality return to the European stage. Yesterday we didn't really get to see much of that, but this feels a little more Vitality-esque. They have strong side lane power. Cabochard on those kind of carry champions with the Jace. Jizuke on a very powerful mage. He does love those mages. Things like Ryze and Azir were champions that he played a lot of last year. Uh, and Attila, he is now on the big carry in the vein. This team fighting from Vitality uh, is very even to that of Splice, and I'm excited to see how things will play out later in the game. In Vettius, i got to draw our attentions immediately to the rune selection here from Attila. Hail of Blades coming out. We've seen it on Zen. we've heard about it on Kindred, now showing up on the Vayne as well. Talk to me. Why Why the choice here? So, with the Hail of Blades changes, you now get 110 bonus attack speed the moment you get put into combat, but any kind of auto attack reset doesn't proc it. Uh, and basically what it means is you can proc your Silver Bolts very, very quickly. Right, and you know that your tumble kind of resets your auto. You can do auto tumble, auto auto into condemn, and you can just like you blow people up very, very quickly. It's very potent on Vayne, and the, uh, once you get rage blades, it's disgusting how quickly you get those rage blades stacked. So uh, in team fights, she becomes very scary. On two items, she's very strong, but you can't just blind pick her. She's not so safe. You have to wait for specific matchups, and seeing the severe uh, champion that can't really outdo her or punish her means that Vitality saw this opportunity to, get, to grab this big carry pick. And when Sivir was in meta, historically Vayne was considered the counter pick. Often teams didn't opt to run it because it was difficult to execute. But if these champions are ever left alone post level 6, Vettius, I mean, Final Hour is just an infinitely better 1v1 ability than on the hunt here. And that's just the reality. We will get a pause coming out. Looks like the issue is coming in from the Izzy Chachi. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot his name Good then. Got him. <laughs> you recovered, recovered well. Yeah. And I, and I love this game. Oh, Moog. We'll keep you guys updated, of course, uh, as to what is going to happen here moving forward. But something I saw on stage that I felt like was really important to this game, Vettius, yes. uh, and by really important, I mean not important at all, but kind of goes in time with a point that I want to make. Yeah. Um, Splice, very traditional. Scaling late game, playing by the book, you know, kind of as we expect Splice to do. Their coach, suit, tie. Opposite side, crazy picks. Yeah. On the side of Vitality. Their coach, Fur jacket and Yeezys. Ooh. And all I'm saying is both teams coaching staff on brand in terms of aesthetic here. Quite on brand. Your monarch, he always, he's very adventurous with how he likes to dress. And, mm. you know, the fur coat, that's a new one. That's a new I one. I seen him come And I'm just going to say, I respect Duke in the classic style too, but sometimes you've got to appreciate a man with a fur coat and some Yeezys. And it's the Yeezys that really, like, I'm no fashion expert. You may be familiar with this, Dracos, but... Even I know that going easy <laughs> with a fur coat is quite an edgy decision-making process when deciding what clothes you're going to put on that day. Uh, I love you for following me down that rabbit hole. Of course, we are still waiting for updates, for confirmations on the pause. It is from the side of Vitality. Mowgli has paused the game. They're laughing about the fur coat, too. They just yeah. they can't get over it. Jazuke, the classic laugh. That Teams won the heart of so many. <laughs> Not always supposed to communicate during the pause. Jazuke can't contain himself. <laughs> no, I don't want to know the giggling about. <laughs> Maybe someone else is showing socks. It's like yesterday with G2. And oh, God, don't get me on about that. I forgot to ask Perks about that. I really want to know what that whole sock situation was. 
but they're just giggling to themselves. It is our third game of the day here and only the second day of the LEC. New season, new rivalries. We're refreshing one of those old rivalries today. Of course, these two teams have a lot of history frequently playing against each other in playoff this was important actually, matches. I believe this uh, matchup was also when we had the teleport backdoor from Attila on the Varus. Yeah, with the Varus, for sure. I, I remember think it was Spice that they were playing against. Uh, it was last year. It was Rocket. It was Rocket. Oh, I you're right. Because it was Memento. I want to thank production for immediately getting in our ears. Yes, yes, yes. Because it was Memento that they were playing against. It's I true. remember now. Uh, and the other thing is that this was a matchup historically um, where the pressure was really on when you think about that third place match back in spring when we first saw oh, yeah. Jazuke start to falter. And now it's kind of uh, the shoes on the opposite foot where Jazuke is the more experienced player in this matchup. And now yeah. Humanoid is the rookie. And you wonder if he is going to have similar issues with the pressure on stage. It did look very good yesterday for Splice. Obviously, the early game. It was rough for the Spice side, but Humanoid was still uh, kind of a shining light for this team as far as rookies go. I just, I find it funny because I read a comment yesterday which is like, you can take the players out of Splice, but Splice is still Splice. Uh, and like this, this draft is just so iconic to what they found success with last year. And what I'm hoping for is that it's like a transition period that while the team is learning to gel together, while they're figuring out what best works for them, they're just kind of adopting a style that Kobe and Zerse did find wins with mm. um, and that they can showcase more aggression in the early game uh, like they were leaning more towards at the very end of summer with that old Splice roster because uh, with the way the current meta is playing out, you can't afford to be slow. You can't rely on that scaling. You've got to have strong lanes. You need to be able to generate pressure. And right now, when you kind of look at how the draft is played out, San versus Jace. The Jace has Kleptomancy. Jace is very obnoxious to play against. He's very strong in the one versus one. Carthus versus Cassio, I think that's very much just a farm lane, pretty neutral. No one's really going to gain much pressure there. And Splice, they should have pressure towards the bot side of the map in terms of wave clear, but they have to be very careful of an all-in from Vayne, especially once he hits that level six mark, because with the Morgana shield, against uh, Braum, it's very effective at mitigating his, his passive CC. Uh, and so it's very easy for Vitality to actually create opportunities to actually start fights and kind of start snowballing the bot side of the map. So I feel like Splice are kind of limited in their early game of where they can play around and what options that they do have. There's the man himself. He ditched the fur coat to stare deeply into your soul. Mowgli. Staring into the screen. Why? He had a peripheral issue. He has for a PC start. A few minutes away from getting back in the game. Got to make sure those peripherals are functioning nicely. Cannot allow for... Functioning at all. Yeah, cannot allow for any misclicks here. Not all have of us get to play Karthus on stage and push R to impact a team fight. Some people got to push multiple buttons. So, you know. Have you uh, it. ever played League of Legends without a keyboard? Ooh. I have once. You have once? Did you yeah. play with just a mouse? Yeah, I had to. It was a ranked game. My keyboard died and I didn't have a spare, so I could only play with my mouse. How did you, what did your, I think I was playing Ari. This I'm time. gonna derail a little bit, what were your bindings? How did you actually, how many buttons did you have in your mouse? Do you have like a Naga? No, was it like I a had, Razor Naga? I had two buttons and the middle click. Oh, so you were doomed. <laughs> I assume you lost that game. No, I didn't. I mean, I got carried, but I'm not gonna pretend that I won it. But it was, uh, yeah, it was an experience. It's I'm, really I'm just saying if you set right click to move, left click to Q, and middle click to ulti, <laughs> you could play Karthus Jungle. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. You could, you could. You'd miss Wall of Pain for sure, but I feel like you you're still making it. Every happen. time you also try to buy items, you just keep queuing things. <laughs> <laughs> because you literally It's not a flawless <laughs> strategy, all right? You're still just playing with a mouse. It's like, let me ooh, click ooh, the shot. Eyebrows. <laughs> Peter Dunn, no longer the on-stage coach, uh, taking a step back to help build up the, uh, the regional league team along with the main roster team. So he's still yeah. very involved with the Splice roster, but he's also taking some involvement with the... Uh, the, the team that is playing in the ERL. I can't quite recall which league that they're playing in. Uh, uh, I believe they're playing in the OVP. Ah, okay. Uh, they brought over Tear the Wolf. They ah, have Freeze yes, on the lineup yes, yes, as yes. well. Quite an exciting one to yeah. keep an eye out for. Well, folks, good news is we are getting now back into game peripheral issues, hopefully resolved, and now we will continue forward. Of course, keep in mind, we're still kind of waiting for that vein to hit level six, and it's also paused again. <laughs> What's what's important to remember here is that we're all having a good time as friends. Yeah, <laughs> we're bonding. <laughs> Tell me, Dracos, what is your favorite meal? Oh, that's really hard. It's really easy for me. Is it? Wait. Tuna pasta, sweet corn, chicken pasta, no, sweet no, corn. No, God, that's no. a go-to usual, but it's sweet and sour chicken with extra pineapple. 
Okay, I can remember that. That's that one's also meal. very simple. I went for simpler. I was wrong. Yeah. I forgot the love sweet and sour. All right, officials, uh, I believe, have confirmed no issue here. We're going to play through on this one. So just waiting for a few moments to get sure. Make sure everyone's situated, you know. Got to appreciate when the pause came through, Jizuke kind of like pushed his chair back and spun around in a circle. You need to give him a moment to kind of awkwardly scoot back in. His feet don't touch the floor, so he's got to, you know, do the, the wiggle. We've all been there. That's a good point. When you sit, do you like to have your feet touching the floor? Or do you like to, like, let them hang? I like to let them, I'm very tall, so it's very rare that I encounter a chair where my feet don't touch the floor. So I, I enjoy letting them hang. It's a novel experience. I always put the chair at the highest it can possibly go. I like to be tall when I sit. It's, uh, I don't know why. I guess I, too, am a... It's a power thing. thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I want to be lord of my PC. <laughs> All right. That nonsense. Now we're back in game. We can talk about League of Legends. It's Take a good a day. Goes. Yes. Yes, audience. I love your energy. Thank you for bearing with us on those first few pauses. We are now back. Game three, day two, LEC. It's Splice versus Vitality. Splice doing Splice things. Vitality mixing it up in Vitality fashion. Really on brand across the board. And farming will be the name of the game in the early stages of play. Cassio and Carthus scale extremely well. They're kind of waiting for those mana items before they can really start to look to get aggressive. Mowgli level two took a lot of damage on the clear and has already used his That's because he had to well. solo it, unfortunately. Ah, yes. He had no pull from anyone. <laughs> um, and he's just kind of left to his own devices. Scott yeah. Crab there, though, will let him heal up a little bit. Xerxes, of course, can be a lot healthier on the Quite an sack. interesting path, though. Because he can't afford to try and invade the blue buff. This would They're be level very three dangerous. Level three. Remember, he has no push in top. He's got the ward here. Zach will probably walk. This isn't that fast. I don't think Zach could just use the elastic slingshot to get closer. But he knows exactly where he is. The smite will be up and available. Zerzi's smite too, but Zerzi doesn't know what he's walking Oh, he's into. got it. He's walking forward. He doesn't know. Oh. oh. Does manage to get it. Now going to continue trying to get the engage on his Xerxes. Has not used the Elastic Slingshot once again. Can try to make the safety. He needs to use it before the fourth hit. Well timed from Xerxes to make it out of that one. Could have been disastrous. Now Sejuani is just invading the Zac, Stealing away his uh, Krugs. This just goes to show how weak Zac is in the jungle. When you get forced out by a Sejuani, you're definitely not having a good time. Jace was able to get the push in on the top side of the map. Excuse me, Jizuke also gets some pressure down. But now Attila in some danger. Well timed Black Shield to stop the stun from going through. But Betty's, we had this conversation earlier on the desk, which was basically tanks that do damage are just miserable to play against. And Sejuani in the early game is a tank that does damage. So Zach, sadly, can clear the jungle. Not going to do a lot of damage here. North Scaring, though, getting frisky, throwing it down. Flash Shield will be available. Three auto attacks. Looking for the fourth, the Flash Forward, the stun, the heal now coming out. The Ignite is there. Attila running the Flash Forward from Kabi. They wanted to get it. Black Shield, not enough. Can't stop the auto. The Pete's are going to bring it home. And the Splice bottom lane find themselves first blood. This is not how the lane was supposed to go for Vitality. This is not how they wanted to set up the vein for success. Excellent way to start the game for Splice. And you have to wonder, they picked the Morgana. They felt like they had the pushing advantage. They felt like they could survive in the lane against the Sivir, but. Just well played. That aggression coming in from Norskar and flashback to the Braum days on Rock Hat. This guy living up to that aggression we expect. And it was Attila and Jectral that actually had the push against um, Kobe and Norskar. And you can see that the, the wave was slowly pushing towards them. They were trying to be aggressive, but then Kobe steps up. Attila spaces away from Jectral, who doesn't have the Black Shield available. Uh, he's not body blocking the Q because he can't afford to anymore. And Norskar, he wants to apply the stun. So he flashes in, lands the auto, and then Kobe's there for the follow up. So. They secure themselves first blood, and there's little that Jack Troll can do to help it. Well played. Of course, Cole already coming in for the vein means he kind of resigned a little bit in that lane phase, but with Jizuke now picking up a blue buff. Vitality not exactly where they want to be. Jizuke getting the blue buff the highlight, or the rest Ooh. of the team. But there's also a very early blue buff. That's the thing you ought to appreciate, because Mowgli, remember, he stole away Xerxes. He's not behind in farm because he was also able to steal away, uh, steal away the Gromp. And that means the Karthus getting a blue buff at level 5 will really help. Oh, race right. and repeat. Goes in, waits for the Black Shield to land on the target. You can only shield one person. Beautifully played by Splice. You wanted some early aggression, and they're here to deliver, Thaddeus. Love this from Xerxes. He recognizes that there's no summoner spells in the bot lane for Vitality. Let's try and keep this vein down as much as possible. Very clean execution, and... Vitality, they literally just get back to lane. They have no vision of that burst. Jack Troll expects the engage to go onto him. Unfortunately, Attila was their target all along, and he ends up losing his life. And I think he sees the Braum leap forward and doesn't realize the Zac is coming as well. So just across the board, very well executed by Splice. You can see Jack Troll picking up what farm he can, but 
Kabi, now with the boots too, just gets to walk up, pressure this lane, take down some of his turret plate, and get some extra gold in his pocket, and a snowballing Sivir. Definitely not what you need. Luckily, Kabi's gonna take enough tower shots that, uh, Gonna get some comfortable farming time for here for Attila on the bottom side. Definitely didn't want to take that many tower shots. He just wanted that last hit of the turret plating. Couldn't quite secure it. But still, two kills now in favor of Splice. As you rightly said, we want to see some early game aggression. Given that the team fights are going to be very volatile, putting that vein behind and getting the Sivir ahead is extremely valuable for Splice. And, uh,. It kind of goes to show again Vitality struggling in this early game, still finding that cohesion and making these small mistakes that the enemy teams are primed and ready to capitalize on. Absolutely. The one piece of good news is that they are getting an ocean for the Karthus in the mid lane. That's going to be huge as well as for the Jace on the top side. Top lane Jace not always known to build the tier a little bit more relying on that Klepto to pick up a few of those mana pots. So this will make a lot of the individual solo lane matchups easier, but still finding themselves at a 1.5k gold deficit just about seven minutes into the game. That Sivir Bounty telling us a pretty big story as Cabo tries to sidestep if Vizichachi is going to go for it. They know Xerxes now coming in. Keep your eyes out for the Elastic Slingshot. Xerxes not going to charge it yet. That's an interesting animation. Slides forward and was never there in the first place. I believe he was just sitting in the brush. Just a bit of a spectator issue. Um, and Cabochard, he is going to be safe. He wasn't forced to burn the flash. Chachi is sitting on an ignite right now, which is why I think Splice want to try and play around that lane. But, you know, this is something that we have to respect Zerse for. Zack, not typically known for being a very dominant early game jungler. While you do have very long range with your E, and you can cr set up some creative ganks, Normally, you still don't see that many ganks in the early game with this champion, but it is a big favorite of his. He's been playing it ever since he arrived in the LCS, now LEC, and he has found a lot of success with it. 11 and 7 is his all time record. Now he's looking and for another not, game He bot. just walks up and immediately starts channeling. Now I'm going to back off here, starting to heal up a little bit as well. And he's ready to go, and they are just constantly threatening. Attila, though, with a level 6. Still, he has to play on the back foot, just does not have the items that he wants. Cole is going to be a big point. Once that catches in, maybe it allows Attila to catch right back up. But for now, respecting the push pressure from the Sivir. So the game returns back to farming. Where will the junglers look to gank? Mowgli, he could look for a potential gank down towards the bot side of the map. Still no flashes available for Kobe and Noskarin. Cabo Shard, he doesn't really have the lead that he would want up against a Scion. I feel like that he has just been a little bit mindful of where Zack could be and the possible all-in power, especially with that ignite on Vizichachi. Uh, mid lane, we talked about there's no real ganking opportunities. It's just very much a farm lane. Interestingly, Jizuke has gone for the tier two boots very early on. Um, and a large part of that is to help dodge around the uh, Cassio skill shots and just uh, help get close Survive. enough to land his own skill shots as well. So interesting that he would go for that rather than grabbing himself a mana item like the Lost Chapter. Now for the collapse, Humanoid going to tank lay waste to the face. Just okay, has to be careful because Zack's now coming in. They want to try to knock this up, but if the Karthus goes down, it'll turn immediately. Norskarin is here first on the roam, but Jizuke is going to get that Death Defied passive. Clips him with it. That's the tipper you want from Norskarin, knocking it down. Alti is going to come out, but not to much effect. Lackluster there for the Karthus. Yeah, and I'm surprised Jizuka held his flash for so long. I think at one point he just accepted that he was going to die. Then he realized that the last hit wasn't coming through. He thought he could get away with his life, but then Norskarin comes in with the ultimate to secure the snipe. And Splice, they find themselves with three kills now in this early game against Vitality. So Jizuka, he thinks he's fine. The grounding comes in, so we can't flash out of this situation. Actually, that's a large reason why he can't flash away, because the grounding. I completely forgot about that. So he gets locked in place. And it that's allows Noskarin to come in close and land that Bromolt. So actually, great play there from Humanoid. Really good setup from the Miasma. And, uh, I mean, that just explains oh. why Jizuki could a run. flash forward, the Ignite's that's a kill. ticking. That's got to be a dead cop. The, buffed, the buffed Ignite. Ooh! All right, barely living. Well done, Just Cabo. Just barely surviving okay, there. We'll call that uh, calculated. We'll say not even close. One more time for the Dunkey fans out there. And uh, really, this is a brutal early game for Vitality. This is not at all the Vitality that we are used to seeing, Vettius. This is a team that was pretty much unmatched in early game prowess outside of Fnatic, and now really struggling here. You look at the summer versus their first day. That's a completely different story. <laughs> oh, man. Very different from what we've seen. And one of the big questions that people had around Vitality was, will Mowgli provide what Kikis could last split? 
Kikis was the driving force in terms of the early game playmaking. He would build leads for himself. The Vitality would then leverage moving into the mid game, but so far, Mowgli hasn't been able to have that same kind of impact. Now, that's not to say that Mowgli is the problem, but you can definitely see the difference in play styles where Kikis was always invading in the enemy jungle. He was denying your camps away from you. He was stealing everything you could possibly want, whereas Mowgli much more on the farm side, looking for potential ganks, trying to scale more towards team fights, and now we will see an early play from him. Naho comes in from Vizichachi, clears the wave as well, so Mowgli's gonna tank it up, does have the Frost Armor passive though, he's gonna try to back out, damage comes through. Vizichachi gonna resurrect. Gonna run for the kill. Mowgli now gonna run for his life, but the slow is there, and they are going to be able to walk away from that one. Okay, pretty clean gank there from Mowgli. He wasn't forced to use his ultimate even, and was able to get away with a kill and his life. Definitely get some gold back in the pockets of Vitality, but that's three turret plates now down. The bot lane of Splice really snowballing, a very different laning phase compared to what we saw yesterday. And Xerse recognizing that the enemy jungler was in the top side, invest his time down towards bot to help that bot lane work even more damage onto the tower. So despite... Interesting Zach animation once again. A little bit of spectator error there, but Humanoid now going to fly forward looking for the fight himself, but there is Bogley immediately trying to take off here, pulling him back in the Miasma. That is a dead card, but he's still throwing out the damage, and here comes Cabo. No scaring is there, but they might not have enough damage to start the fight right up until Chachi gets there. Cabo going to look for the disengage. Mowgli, though, maybe the one under fire. Sidestep there on the Brahma ulti. Mowgli going to go down. Cabo now in no man's land, but Jack Troll is here for the backup. They have to be careful. How are they going to land the CC? The tether is now coming out on a Norse and They're backing off. Black Shield there to stop any follow back. That's the ignite. Burn, baby. Burn. Norse Garen going to drop. Vizachachi taken out as well. And if anyone's going to fight you like that, it's going to be Vitality. And it's Vitality that actually come out on top in terms of the kills. I believe that was three for two overall. Once Jack Troll finally joins the fight, but now Attila and Cobb in a 1v1. Final hour gets popped from Attila, but Cobb is just like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> just backs away. Not interested. Got the ulti cooldown, exactly what he wanted there in the exchange. We take a look back at what is a very extended fight. So Humanoid flashes in here. He wants to lock Jizuke down and start getting kills onto the Karthus. Karthus does have the ultimate available, but doesn't actually use it in this exchange. And Humanoid then gets blown up by the TP in Cabo. Now, the extended exchange here from Splice, while it looks good because they have a numbers advantage, they're kind of divided in who they want to focus down. Noskaren has his attention onto Cabo shards, while Chachi and Zeus have their attention onto Mowgli. And while they kill Mowgli, it actually allows Jackdaw to join the fight, and Cabochard is able to have his 1v1, which is where the Jace thrives. So they end up getting themselves two kills back, and it ends up working overall to be a net positive for Vitality. And good for them to find a way back after what was, you know, struggles in the first few minutes of the game. The gold as we approach the 15 minute mark. Just about dead even. 200, 300 in the favor of Vitality, along with that Ocean Drake. Towers falling, though, is the next big thing that we have to look at. Mowgli on the top side, potentially ready to contest a little bit more here in Vizichachi's lane. Ooh, but now he's in no man's land. He's going to dash over. Knockup is going to be there. Humanoid there with the follow-up. Knockup does not connect in the end, so Mowgli gets to walk away, but very much playing on the Razor's Edge. Uh, so the turret planning has fallen off. If we could see how the bot tower was doing, I feel like Splice are very close to knocking that one down, whereas Cabochard is in a very similar position up towards the top side of the map. So it's very much a race between these two lanes, between Vitality and Splice, who can secure that first tower. And we may very well see a swap from one of these two teams. Splice do have the option to actually push out this wave, go back to base, and then transfer up to top lane so they can get that first tower. But it looks like they're way more interested in finding kills. Ooh, because he managed to get the knockup on Attila. He's now running for his life. Soul Shackles comes out to get the disengage. Now Xerxes ready to threaten, but they're just interested in the tower, burning those cooldowns to force back the bot lane of Vitality. Vitality themselves, though, looking to fire back with a Rift Herald. I like that aggression coming out from Cobbett and Norse Garen. With the Storm Mazes completed, Sivan knows that he can quite easily trade against Attila. Both of the Summoner spells from the Vein have disappeared once again. And Cobbett and Norse Garen showing their proficiency with each other after what was a very difficult game yesterday. And now Splice, they're just keeping up the pressure, looking to get a bit of deep vision down. They have control over the bot side of the map. The Ocean Drake is their next objective. And they're setting up for it very calm, very calculated in a very traditional Splice style. And unfortunately, on the other side for Vitality, they're forced a little bit on the back foot here. They're not able to map with an objective of their own, still hoping that Cabo can solo take down that tower against Vizichachi. Scion, though, may not win the 1v1 duel, but can obviously do a lot of damage to this minion wave. Mowgli hovering around Attila, hoping that Splice will take the bait, but they're not going to have it. 
Got plenty of gold on that sivir, just looking for the back. Now, Vitality do still have good scaling, especially in a side lane. They could look to play 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, and when you think about it, Karthus, once he gets like two, three items, um, his ultimate will always offer that global threat. So if Attila finds himself in a 1v1, fun fact, it's a 2v1. If the Jace finds himself in a 1v1, joke, it's not. It's a 2v1. So uh, Vitality have this ability to play all three lanes. But this is one of those big debates, right? When you're running like team fight versus split push, Ultimately, what it comes down to is who is better at being able to force their style. If you want to play one through one, you need to have strong enough lanes that you can force Splice to split up. But if Splice are the ones creating pressure in the lanes, if they're the ones getting the vision first, they can group up, play around an objective, and force Vitality to group so that they can't play towards their win conditions. And the strong point right now for Splice is in their mid laner and AD carry. 2 0 0, the score for Kabe, 1 1 2 for Humanoid. On the opposite side, Cabo doing incredibly well on the top side, 2 0 2. Sadly, the weak point for Vitality, their bottom lane. But the Karthus, Vettius, we talked about it yesterday. There's a certain degree of inevitability to this Karthus scaling. Eventually, he is just a team fight monster. It's very true. Uh, the longer the game goes, the stronger and more obnoxious he becomes. He's just one of those champions that seems to scale infinitely. <laughs> and especially once he gets the death cap, he is one scary uh, lich. I think he's... I don't know. It's, it's, he's like... He's like unalive, I think is how I read it. He's not quite undead, but he's not alive. Um, anyway, there's undead down. and there's unalive. Let's not <laughs> let's not mix it up, folks. It's complicated, but Karthus is unalive. That's canon. <laughs> this is how we write lore. We base it on what Vettius makes up, depending on how he's feeling on the day. <laughs> it's true. I define all of the lore. <laughs> now, three members of Splice in the top lane. Jack Troll gonna move in, though. Knows that he's locked up here, tries to get the Soul Shackles. Uses just a little bit more. Now wants to back off. So they're trying to find the connection onto Attila, but he's still alive. It's gonna require a massive outplay from the bank, but they're getting lower and lower. The Karthus ulti now gonna come in, but now that the Braum is Connected with the concussive blows, Attila is all but doomed. Ooh. The third stack doesn't proc, but Humanoid now in trouble. Cabo trying to come in and clean up, but the rest of the team is here. Jazuke now gonna have to back off. Cabo running. Mowgli stuck between a rock and a hard place. Has to flash over the wall as well, and things are just falling apart for this Vitality lineup. Really good play from Splice, though. They send Zeus a top because they want to see John to the tower. They know that if they just have the numbers, they can easily take that objective. And Vitality, they try to go for the outplay. Jack Troll face checks a brush. They think that they might be able to get one or two kills off the back of it, but really good play. Great use of the summoner spells. Keeps all their members alive. And then just as Humanoid looks like he's called out, looks like he's about to die, the rest of his team shows up to take him to safety. So Splice, their coordination is looking on point. And I feel like we're seeing a much different team to what we saw yesterday. When the bot lane was allowed to play the game, when they weren't put so far behind, they had a much, they're having a much stronger performance. And you have to wonder where the leadership is coming from on the side of Vitality right now in-game because Splice actually changed more members but are looking more coordinated. Interesting thing to see now. You can see hoping that the stopwatch combined with the Karthus ultimate is going to net some kills here, potentially give Attila his highlight reel moment. Sadly, one thing Braum is exceptionally good at is once he auto-attacks you, you don't get a highlight reel. You don't get to dodge all the skill shots. People are going to auto-attack you and you're going to die. Humanoid as well though outplaying the scenario quite nicely with a quick stopwatch. Yeah, really good use of the stopwatch. And then Vizichachi ulting his way in as well. Wasn't forced to use the teleport. Means that he can just help keep the rest of his team alive. Love this play from Splice. Very coordinated and really good use of the heal as well from uh, Corbett. Just as the Karthus ultimate was coming to keep his support alive. Paired that up with the Guardian. More than enough survivability. So now one and a half gold. Uh, one and a half K gold is the lead now for Splice. Ocean Drake is spawning relatively soon. And Vitality already setting up around that objective. But the Baron is spawning in about 10 seconds soon. And with the lead that Splice have, it's very easy for them to force Vitality to come to them, create these 5v5 situations that they're looking for. And you kind of see this three item Sivir starting to come into fruition. That'll be the big swing factor for Vi uh, Splice. Of course, the most terrifying thing that Vitality have to consider now. Other than the on the hunt, as it will come out against Kabajar, they're hoping to catch him out the side step. Oh, the to the skies is just so clean, but sadly it is not enough. Too many members there. Kabi going to pick up the kill. Now unstoppable. Excellent pick off there from Splice. The question though is, what do they do with it? Well, I don't think they can convert it into much. They can start pushing up this bot side of the map. And Vitality, because they're the ones in more control of the top side, they're going to try and get some vision down. Oh. Humanoid just finds a solo kill. That's about all you can hope for. Jizuke now has to run, does not have enough health to sit on that tower. Ready in a moment's and notice. Splice for are just to taking come in. everything. Vitality. We questioned what their game plan was yesterday. They seemed uncoordinated. They, they seemed like that they wanted to keep trying to force plays and that they couldn't really turn it into anything. And 
many fans, many of us on the desk were expecting a different Vitality to show up today. But again, members getting caught left, right, and center. Small mistakes getting very quickly punished. And Splice, a very experienced team, many players that are very aware of how they can punish these mistakes. And they're doing it just like Schalke did yesterday. And it's such a good look for Splice right now. Yes, Vitality are struggling, but it's Splice who's punishing them at every single turn. You know, punishing all of these aggressive plays, punishing Jack Troll for roaming in to try to clear vision as we look back at this replay on the picture in picture. Just excellent sidestep on the binding. And sadly, Cassia, once she slows you down, she's just going to run you down. Morgana not with a lot of tools to stop that without the binding available. It's a good look for Splice. They played more aggressively in the early game, even with a more Splice-style composition. Something that's been often critical of them is playing a single style. Well, the draft indicated one thing, the gameplay indicated another, as they have been picking apart Vitality. Yeah, and all of it's come from the bot lane. Comet and Oscarin did a fantastic job in the 2v2. Xerse then reinforced that by sending a couple of ganks their way. They constantly look to shut down this vain Morgana duo. And now they're sitting at a 2,000 gold lead. Now, this gold lead isn't insurmountable. The scaling on Vitality still exists, but you just kind of compare the difference in the items, and Splice already sitting at two, two and a half, means that if Vitality tried to fight them now, they would just get crushed. As the second ocean will fall, a big question is where is the Rift Hail going to go? Mowgli, of course, picking that one up means it could recoup about a thousand of the gold loss if they can use it to break a tower. But right now, as it ticks lower and lower, it does not look like Vitality are going to get an ideal setup with that very powerful cooldown. Yeah, it was an objective that many lives were lost in order to uh, gain. He has just gone back to base. I wonder if he's going to bother to throw it out or not. It is very close to timing out. Better to use it than to... There you go. He is just going to throw it out at the last second. Better to just have it on the field and not gain anything to not use it at all. Maybe it'll be a point of pressure. Do have a Till and Jack Troll in the mid lane, so Tawani ready to pack them up, but sadly Splice, they know exactly where the Herald is, which means they know exactly where Vitality is. It's a Chachi. Like Chachi. Chachi. Once again, Black Shield, you can only protect one member. Will Jack Troll sacrifice his life to save Attila if necessary? I have to imagine the answer is yes. So you can see from Splice right now, they're just playing the slow, calculated game. Very Splice esque. Uh, they like to play around vision a lot. They like to make sure that they have waves pushing. I believe top and bot is actually pushing in their favor. And now they have full vision control around the Baron area. Now you'll see every time they push at mid, they'll try and get deeper and deeper wards. Very textbook play from the side of Splice. And while ooh, in the early game, he's scaring. <laughs> Careful. This man lives on the edge. He's got a pink keyboard. He's got a pink Braum skin. He's fearless. He's a fan of the pink. I just like the pink. So do you. Look at you. Thanks, man. Matchy. Twinsies. <laughs> I don't but have his luscious hair, though. That's true. Some luscious hair. His cool glasses, too. All right, that's a little weird. We're getting a little too <laughs> personal with the Norse character. His smile. His eyes. <laughs> the way he looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> but we were critical of some of the things that Splice showed last season with passive early games, waiting for scaling options. They've obviously played much more aggressive. But the one thing we were never critical of is that once Splice are in that area of the game where they are so incredibly comfortable, this mid to late game stage, they're very, very dominant. And they've now hit that point quite comfortably. 25 minutes to the game, double ocean, 3k gold lead just about. Things look good. Yeah, man. Splice is scary in the late game. You know, they, they used to be known as that like 40 minute team. And if they got there, you very rarely won. Now, the game, it's easier to end compared to what it was, given that cannon minions spawn every wave once we hit the 25-minute mark. But I think what Splice has been waiting for is exactly what you see on your screen now. Have a look at that civet. See that shiny, glowing yellow sword of death? That is what Splice have been waiting for. Three items severe, devastating to deal with in team fights. And now we just need to see Splice actually force one. Go to the Baron. Well, first, push out the waves. <laughs> Set up your vision <laughs> and go to the Baron. You're such an analyst. You, you, you have to specify. You can't skip a step. You're like, wait, no, 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 no. Just to be clear, <laughs> they do also have to ward and set up vision and make sure the yeah, it's like, dead. It's, so when I was learning about this, um, the, the, the process that you always repeat is push mid, do something. Push mid, do, do something. something. Then go yep. back to push mid and then go do something. But this is the most crucial part of any step. Pushing the mid lane so that Vitality have to deal with the waves that are coming, and you can just see then Splice have full reign to move into the enemy jungle and set up all this happy vision. So, yeah, very textbook starting the Baron off now. They haven't spotted this ward out, so Vitality are aware of what's going on, but this will actually die pretty quickly. It's one of my favorite wards in League of Legends. TP from the Jace, though. But this is perfectly fine for Splice, because now they get a free summoner spell, they can go back, they can reset, and guess where they're going to go? 
Is it mid lane to push? It is in fact mid lane to push, Daniel nice. Dracos. I feel like you've read the textbook as well. No, I'm just learning. I'm learning on the fly. <laughs> Now, the one thing that um, Spice do have to deal with is the wave pushing down bot. There's a charge. He currently doesn't have the teleport. He's running Smite, um, which means that Spice might have to do a slightly bigger reset um, before they can look to try and contest the Baron, and that's kind of what you're seeing right now. So, again, very slow, very calm, calculated game from Spice, a very textbook, but now they have the teleport away from Cabochard. So what they'll do now is they'll have this bot wave pushing, uh, they'll wait for Cabochard to show up so that he's clearing the wave, and then they'll really threaten the Baron. They'll say, okay, we're actually committing to it now, because you're either going to fight us 4v5, which, fun fact, we can win, um, or you're going to give us the Baron, which, fun fact, we then win again. So, um, Splice are a great way. If you ever want to teach someone how to play proper, quote-unquote, League of Legends, uh, this is a very good team to study. Good to look at for sure, but we talked a lot from Splice's perspective. Let's take a look at the Vitality angle. They gotta make a play, man. They gotta, they gotta go for something. Because um, if they just sit and wait, Splice will set up the textbook that will make it very difficult for Vitality. Now the Vayne is on two items. She's a full item behind the Severe, but it is still threatening to deal with. The fact that you have the Rage Blade means that you will still deal a lot of damage. Uh, and the outplay potential that is available to you on a Vayne with a Karthus that has two items as well, these fights can still be swung, but Vitality have to find some creative fights or a pick somewhere if they want to stand a chance, which is look at the minimap right now. You can see Cabochard in the bot lane. The Mountain Drake has spawned. And Vitality, they can't afford to answer. No, slowly but surely getting choked out of the game, a difficult spot to be. We see the Vayne, two and a half items approaching three. We were, you know, if you're a Vitality fan, you're hoping for that power spike. You're hoping to see Attila go to these side lanes, take down the opposition, but he's just not getting the opportunity. Is the threat of Splice grouping as they are now, as they take the Mountain Drake. Simply too great. They just have so much raw power. And look, Sivir's so far ahead that the QSS pickup is easy, not even going to cost anything. But Splice can't afford to slow this game down too much. I'm surprised that they put more focus on the Mandrake there rather than the Baron, because that was the perfect position to take the Baron. But they, I guess they feel that with the Mandrake, it will be easier to secure the Baron, and they can easily set that situation at once again. You can already see the Scion heading down towards the bot lane. He's going to create a window for them to go force the Baron once more. Um, that is the other thing that we have to note now is that the blue buff is about to respawn, which is going to be crucial because the Casio has gone for the Ludens as opposed to the tier build, and so yep. would go, you'd go Oom super quickly trying to take the Baron. But once, literally, once you have the Mountain Drake and the blue buff and the mid lane pushed, if they then choose not to take the Baron, I will be confused. So I'm actually glad that you mentioned that because while we don't have much action happening, I can talk a little bit about how Cassio's uh, skill order max has changed a little bit. So you will see that some Cassios don't go for the tier as you identified, which means that their mana um, gets drained much faster. So what Cassios will do to compensate is they'll max the Q and the W, and they won't actually put points in the E. And the reason for that is because it only costs 10 mana at level 1. So you can still spam it. You still get a lot of damage from your Q. The Miasma slow increases as well, so you have a lot more utility. And you still get decent damage from your E because it's empowered by the poison as well. So just that slight shift that you see in Cassius means that they can have a much stronger mid-game spike by being able to rush the Luden's Echo. Mowgli, though, potentially caught out in No Man's Land. Miasma goes down, trying to set up for the Zac engage. Is not going to happen, though. And all that utility for Cassio is okay. now going to work out nicely. The blue buff is there. They're going to start the Baron. North Scarer trying to buy a bit it's of quick. time. Vitality, though, sniffing this one out. They know what's happening until on the way in. 4K and dropping. Going to open with the Call of the Salty. Immediately moving on to the Braum now. Seeing the stopwatch coming out. Humanoid, you got to keep your eyes on this Cassio. Where is the ult going to go for now? Nowhere. Just the disengage from both sides. Now, there is a wave pushing in bot in favor of Vitality. This means that they're the ones that should be able to gain pressure and priority around the river. And they should be able to secure a tower as well. And this is the risk. Splice, they skipped a step there. There was nothing really for them to force. It was a full-on 5v5, and I love the way in which Vitality led with the Karthus ultimate. That huge chunk of damage was a great way to kick off the fight, because remember that the Baron also reduces your magic resistance, which means that you take that additional damage as well. So good decision-making there from Vitality. Very patient, very calm. Don't concede the objective. And they're able to buy a little bit more time. The Vayne now hitting three items. Karthus getting very close to that point too, but Splice immediately back on the Baron. They haven't dealt with the bot wave yet. But the health bars are back up from that Ocean Drake. The double Ocean healing them up now as they move in to attempt this one. Jizuke with no ultimate. The Karthus needs to get into the middle of that team, but it's going to be so difficult. The Zac is now coming in as well. Attila moving forward, looking for a little bit more here on the Vayne. Keep your eyes on that champion. Big burst of damage there. 
as the Silver Bolts does proc, but both sides playing it slowly, playing it surely. Humanoid stunned up, but not going to move forward, not going to get aggressive. They see Vizichachi is there to CC anyone who would try to take him down. Oh, and that was very close. I liked what Spice were doing. They tried to re-engage the fight, knowing that Jizuke and Mowgli's ultimates were unavailable, but they couldn't, con uh, they couldn't convert it into a successful fight, meaning that a lot of farm was lost to the bot tower. Cabo now slowly etching further and further ahead three and a half items on this jace and not going to get the red buff steal sadly but, but a good spot to be for cabo can't always contest Kabi in these fights if he's not given the front line to protect him and additionally vane at three items too yes and karthus you can see he's getting stronger and stronger this late game for vitality cannot afford to be underestimated and forcing his baron gets harder and now spice they're just going straight back to it. And we saw this from Vitality yesterday, repeatedly forcing the Baron. This time the Karthus Requiem is up. They get that one out, 5k. Gonna drop down. Jack's ready to go forward. Has been locked up by the Miasma. And Splice backing off once again. But they're not really converting. They're not gaining much off the back of this. They want to try and start a 5v5, but Vitality, they're not actually allowing Splice to pull this one off. Now, ooh, face check from Chachi. Chachi. Gonna go down. Chachi now in trouble. Kabo trying to zone out, but here comes Kabo Shard. Being forced back, can't be disabled. Tokyo Drift, not gonna get it. Gets taken down. Attila gonna grab that one. Kill gonna be a big pick up the root coming in as well. Jizuke tempted to try to fire back. Splice still moving forward, playing a bit aggressive. But Vitality now firmly in control after about 15 minutes of nearly flawless play from Splice. Man. Vitality now in a position to threaten the Baron themselves. They do have Mowgli alive. They always have to be afraid of the Xerse aggression, but instead they're just going to send Kabashar towards the bot side of the map, utilize his 1v1 strength. Remember, we talked about how they do have this split push power. In a side lane, Cabo can't really be challenged by anyone on Splice, and by finding that pick, you can see that Splice don't really have that many answers. They needed to have control around the Baron to force Vitality to group to give them the best case scenario. But here we are, Vitality now kicking this one off. And the struggles around Baron counting against Splice as Ajachi will respond as the fast. smite, though, not the TP cannot come. We got to see where Xerxes going to be. He's not going to get there soon enough. That's the Baron for Vitality. Splice have to be shaking their head after that one. They were in control for so much of the game, but just like that, Vitality are back in it. And it's Splice that they skip steps. They tried to force the Baron multiple times. They did exactly what Vitality did yesterday, but the goals were a little clearer. The intent was, let's get that 5v5. But the Karthus ult at the beginning of every fight, combined with the extra Baron damage, pretty much removed the engage from Splice. Xerxes was at half health at the beginning of every fight, which meant they couldn't commit. You ended up just kind of poking each other, then disengaging. And once Splice had taken too much damage, Vitality could then get another advantage elsewhere on the board. They find a pick onto Vizichachi, they secure a tower on the bot lane, they reclaim vision control around the Baron area, and now they're the ones with the objective, and the gold is exactly even vitality finding a way back in this game very impressive now gonna put some of that scaling to good use Karth as you mentioned it now with the Leandries just gonna cut through the members of the team splice need to play on the defensive for now they're setting up a bit of vision trying to make sure those towers will not drop of course the Baron going in just ties up vitality so it's not quite some of the Baron power plays that we're used to excuse me shell V power plays that we're used to because they're just not, you know, so far ahead. They snuck this one pretty much out from under Splice's nose. Yeah, and Cabo is so strong right now. The blood is completed as well. You can see on Vizichachi, he spent so much time grouping up with his team that he's almost been Flame Horizon now. He's only at two and a half items. That sign is not as tanky as you would like him to be. And while he does have a lot of HP, it's going to be difficult for him to survive an Infinity Edge Vein. The Leandries now completed for Jizuke as well. This Vitality has reached a point where if they go for that 5v5, it doesn't look so one-sided for Vi Splice anymore. And Splice maybe not going to be able to dictate the pace in terms of forcing these fights too. Vayne all but unstoppable in a side lane at this stage of the game, but still choosing to group. They're looking for the pick here. Norse Garen has been very confident as he moves forward to place his vision. Well, time Blast Cone to take yep. him to safety there. Could have been death. Zerse is walking with him though, always good to have your ward buddy. But note how Vitality are playing on all three lanes right now. They're kind of spread around the map, utilizing the Baron as much as they can. Getting deep vision into Spice's jungle. And the gold, telling a very unique story of this game where Vitality were the team to fall behind to try to bring it back as much as they could. And just as it continues, 
Shifting back into Vitality's favor further and further. If the next fight goes in their favor too, they will most likely break open the base or get some greater objective. Look at the damage coming out from Jizuke right now onto Vizichachi. Little to no magic resistance. He has a lot of HP though, so that Leandris does even more work. But the range from Vitality is still very short. Vain, very difficult to get close to those towers. The wave clear from uh, Corbett coming in very handy right now. Vitality haven't yet actually secured any objectives off the back of this Baron. It's about to run out in 25 seconds. In full, 1-3-1, Cabo in the top lane, Zuke hovering around the bottom lane in the three-man core of Jackrel, Attila, and Mowgli. Focused around the mid lane, but you're right, not able to get any greater objectives. Cassio and Sivir pretty easily clearing through these waves, while Karthus has done some damage on the bottom side. Not able to get much of a greater advantage. Xerxes doing a good job of kind of hovering in fog of war. Making Vitality question whether or not they can fully commit to taking one of those towers. We're now getting to a point in the game where one decision could very much just end the game. Death timers are getting really long. All the minions, now that we've hit 37 minutes, have kind of reached max scaling. So they're really strong as well. The kind of intent was that, that you don't need um, a Baron anymore to end games. And the fact that you get cannon minions every wave makes sieging that much easier too. But you're now seeing this tricky situation where Splice are afraid to fight because of how strong Vitality is with their fourth items being completed. However, Vitality can't force a fight or really split push because the wave clear from Splice is too strong. So now we're waiting for the next Baron to spawn and both teams want to find an opportunity in this moment. Vitality, the best case scenario for them is that they actually don't fight around the Baron and instead they split push. They just use the poke from Karthus to uh, break into the base elsewhere. And you can actually see two members moving down towards the bot side of the map. Vizichachi has no teleport. And they may just try to rush this down, and Mogi needs to be careful, as Splice could look for an engage. I think Mogi's the bait here. Binding does go in the Black Shield as well. They're trying to stop the engage in its tracks. Meanwhile, their hand has now been revealed, as Kabul will start to push in on the bottom side, walking this wave in. Splice now moving down. They have to respond to this one. Meanwhile, the rest of the team's going to get that mid prio walk up, get down a bit of Baron Vision, and Vitality actually get control of the pit with this play. Yeah, I like that from Vitality. Smart. They didn't need all five members in the mid lane. As long as the other members of Vitality just play defensively enough, they could avoid any kind of engage from Splice, and it will allow them to clear out the vision around the Baron area and threaten that bot tier three. But you can see how Splice want to group, Vitality want to separate, and while they could potentially still win a 5v5, again, Karthus, Vayne, Sejuani engage. And as your you hashtag it, quick stat of the day, sorry, Vedi, yeah, yeah, so go, go, this go. is now officially the longest game. It would be a spice game, wouldn't it? It would be a spice game. That does feel, uh, yeah, on point. But of course, we have to remember back to the days of 2018 spring where games were a literal year. <laughs> we played one game in 2018. Now here we are. I uh, had like seven birthdays in spring of last year. It was crazy. We grew old. We had, had children. a midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. But now we're back in the prime of youth. <laughs> 39 minutes into the game, the Baron respawns. Vettius. He's in the prime of youth, and that Zack is really trying to find an engage. Has not happened yet, but definitely wants to get something going here. Vitality willing to back off here, willing to give up a bit of that vision that they fought for earlier. A lot of deep vision in the enemy jungle. Cabo can use to try to find a flanking TP, maybe find his way See, into the back line. It's like this point's in the game where I'd love elements of Nexus Blitz to occur. Hang on, could be a fight here. Oh. Bartle Royale. Bartle Royale. You know? That's what I mean, right? You know, you get to this point <laughs> in the game, and then all of a sudden an arena drops down, and everyone's I, like, I Fight. think the caster should control it. I think we push a button. <laughs> the arena slowly shrinks. But of course, the perfect setup could come out. So now gonna try to back away, but the charge trying to move over, but Combo is there on the flank. Now the ulti coming in. There's the Requiem. Help oh, us yeah, get cut down. Jackal's still alive, but we now gonna bust out with a stopwatch there. Busy Chachi taking down. Keeping O'Donnell as one suffers with the Karthus in the melee range. Kabe running as fast as he can. Until now picked up. He can't sell. He can't move out. Oh my! Just deliver it to him! Call Lee Ferrando. Call Deliveroo. This man needs a job. Kabe 
Cap's getting cleaned up. And Attila finds himself the triple kill. Look at the death timers on Splice. They get aced. Vitality have all five members alive. They could look to end the game right now. And just an incredible fight in the end. Splice getting anxious. Finally think that they have the engage Vettius, but they absolutely do not. A black shield stops anything from going on to Attila. The game turning in the favor of Vitality. The 1-1 curse alive and well for the Splice lineup at Vitality, reminding us how they've earned their spot at Worlds. They still gotta get more kills. They still have to end things out. Vitality take the win over Splice. And at the end of the day, neither team walks away 100% satisfied. And both teams walk away 1-1 one, one on the week. You can see the shaking of the head from Yamato. He's got a smile, but he is very much like, that could have been like better. I wanted you to know, you ran it down for a little bit. One, two, three, <laughs> but you know, And that's what matters. And at the end of the I, I just got to praise Cabo. Because while things were going wrong on the other side of the map, Cabo kept a cool head, slowly built those advantages, found one or two gangs from Mowgli, and it feels like that power point did help Vitality hold on for so much longer than people would have expected. And I, I, we've... We've also got to remember that for a lot of that game, Splice were well in control. They were following the textbook to a T, but then there was one point where they skipped a step or two, and that just gave Vitality the avenue to store things out just a little bit longer, to allow that Vayne to get to three items, four items, to get the Karthus to a point where his Requiem could literally win a fight single-handedly. And we saw it at the very end. Splice go for the engage, but the damage from Karthus alone was enough for Attila to then just run through the entire Splice team. And look, Vettius, no matter how many years we play this game, people will still mess up Baron setups. No one has ever gotten 100% clean, 100% right, and you gotta feel for Splice, difficult way to go out, but for Vitality, that final fight, absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look at it once again, brought to you by Alienware. So it all kicks off with what looks like Attila being in the wrong place. Uh, and he's kind of separating for the rest of his team, but he then just melts through the Zank. You know, and just look at how much damage this Karthus ultimate does. Colby does spell shield it, and Humanoid's doing a good job of kind of life stealing back up, but then Jazuka gets involved in the fight. He's dealing with Humanoid, while Attila is just ripping through the front line on the other side of the map. He then gets delivered to Colby. He gets two hits. He then picks up a thousand gold, which he doesn't have a chance to spend because he's too busy murdering the members of Splice. Fantastic stuff from Attila. Very good stuff from him. And Vitality, that was great. Very well played. But on the side of Splice, none of the damage was on the vein. There was a Scion and there was a Zac approaching that vein. The yeah. Sivir and the Cassio were in the mid lane. Yeah. So it just feels like communication But it, it was the thing about collapsed. that choke point too, right? Like yeah. it was difficult and the moment the vein turned around, uh, it was always going to be hard. So I think the game got really difficult for Splice the moment they reached that point. They did have a full item advantage over their opposition, and they couldn't properly utilize it. Still, a lot of positives to be taken away from Splice, um, but Vitality do end up finding themselves the win. Absolutely the case. Well, we've narrowed it down to Attila, Cabo Shard, and Kabi in the Kia player of the game. Vote. Hit us up on uh, LOE Sports on Twitter, at LOE Sports is the place, with your pick. I mean, it's difficult for me. I would yeah. actually be more inclined to give it to someone like Cabo, yeah. uh, largely because when you look at someone like Attila, he did lose in the laning phase. He did struggle. He was a large part of where that deficit came from. And in that final fight, he was definitely clutch. But I do feel like the amount of pressure that Cabo Shard uh, created on the side lane was definitely a large part of why Vitality were able to find that win. And the flank as well to make sure that Attila could survive was a good game from Cabo overall. But for more on Vitality's win, let's hear from Lore and their mid laner. Thank you very much, Dracos. Back and forth game for you guys, but a, a victory indeed after yesterday. How did you manage to take it in the end? Because until mid-game, it didn't seem like that you would win at all. Uh, well, uh, our other game went uh, really rough and uh, we just focused on uh, scaling. And the Splice was not doing much uh, with their advantage, so we just uh, stopped their Nasher and uh, just uh, keep stalling. And in the end, uh, we abused their mistake in the end and won. Yeah, and nice victory in the end. Now, one thing that surprised me is the Karthus in the mid lane, because we've been used to seeing this pick in the jungle. Yeah. How come you've been playing this one? Uh, well, uh, my bot lane told me that uh, if I go Karthus mid, they will um, <laughs> completely destroy bot lane. <laughs> and then they got... That didn't happen. <laughs> and then they got solo kill two times, and I'm like, um, 
What's happening, guys? Wow. <laughs> okay, so... And then I, I found myself, like, playing against Zach as Cartus, so I'm like... Uh, let them push, guys. I can't uh, go on the lane, Zach will jump. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, really, really rough, but uh, I'll do it uh, again if it means to win the game. That's a good spirit for a teammate. Now, I have one question to ask you because you added uh, one more player in the jungle replacing Kiki. Smugly coming from Africa Freaks. How is it going between you? Because I know it can be complicated when Korean players come to Europe with communications and stuff like that. So, how is it going so far? Uh, we, know Mo we know Mowgli and I know Mowgli for a long time. Back in April, May, when we Korean bootcamped in uh, Korea, uh, we went to the Africa house as well and we played uh, with them and the Mowgli and Spirit were the main ones that were talking English. Mm -hmm. So we could see already that he was talking English. Then I met him again at Words, uh, I duoed with him and uh, I knew I wanted, uh, I wanted him for uh, my next jungler for the next year. And yeah, pretty much I really wanted him, so I told him how to get this guy. That's a nice addition to the team, indeed. Now I know that after Worlds, you went back to Korea. You felt yes. a bit disappointed, maybe? Why did you go back? I mean, training during the off-season. What was the point? Uh, for me, I could, uh, at Worlds, I could beat uh, every single mid laner but Rookie. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, I felt this way for the first time, like not being able to beat uh, someone. And I just really wanted to practice hard. And uh, my last two months, I bootcamped in Korea to solve this. Then I, then I lost to figure out all stars, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I, I still lose. But uh, I really wanted to practice those two months. And uh, I hope that the next time I face uh, uh, world uh, mid laners like Faker and Rookie, I hope next time I can beat them. Fair enough. What is your mindset then coming into the LEC this year? Well, I want to go final, finally. Last, last year I went uh, third place two times, and uh, two times in a row we were so close to final. Like we were uh, rank one for the world split, and then we just uh, have a low streak, or we, well, summer split was uh, the reverse instead. Mm -hmm. We lost a lot, then Kikis came and we went uh, playoffs, but still, like, both times, finals were so close, but yet so far. So this time I really want to go finals, I don't want to have, like, empty chairs in the crowd, I want uh, everything to be full, like, finals is a... Uh, a really good experience to and play on it, I guess. You have many, many weeks to train and to achieve this goal. Thank you very much, Jizuke, for joining me today. And we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, Misfits will take on SK Gaming. Don't go anywhere.